A year after the earthquake and tsunami ravaged northeast Japan, the people I talk to who seem to be surviving the best are those with a daily purpose, like the woman who makes dolls out of salvaged kimono or the man who started a cafe with his friends. The Japanese commemorated the tsunami anniversary by lighting candles, hanging paper lanterns, laying flowers, and shedding tears. Buddhist monks beat drums, and mourners burned incense and sounded a gong. All to honor the dead. In Minami Sanriku, Setsuko Abe honors the lives of those lost with salvaged kimono. She searched through rubble to find them, washed them in the river, then disassembled them. I don't cut it. I, 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 I don't cut it. Um, I actually sort of made it into like a flat, just a cloth. She turns the fabric into these charming dolls called Hime Daruma. Every day, she takes her materials to the housing facility's common room and then hand stitches the dolls and uses cosmetic blush to give the faces color. The little dolls are sold to support the local economy and sold online to support the relief effort. That spirit of generosity abounds all over tsunami-ravaged Japan. A farmer drove six hours to donate Chinese cabbage. Jun Suzuki and friends opened the non-profit cafe to give the unemployed something to do, the disheartened some community, and the hungry some homey food. Miyuki Kono runs a ryokan, or inn, up a rise overlooking the bay. She watched the water rise, then escaped through the kitchen and up these stairs to the roof. As I was running down the corridor, I could hear the wave coming and covering this room. I didn't, I mean, I had no what extra whatever to look back and see what's coming behind me. The front room was heavily damaged, but she was back in business in two months, and she says busier than ever catering to all the reconstruction crews. She also credits the relief effort because a lot of um, what was what she has now is donated. So, they, ah. you know, they rebuilt that front room there, the dining room there, and a lot of the food stuff that she serves has been donated to her as well. And can that I, cafe as well. Was, can I ask you about something we haven't really spent mm -hmm. that much talking about, which is the fallout from Fukushima. Right, because um, I didn't go to the no-go zone. But how far away was that? Roughly. The closest I got to the no-go zone was about 60 miles um, away into an area called Koryama. There's actually, this is perhaps another story that I'll do, there's a agricultural technology center that, that um, tests all the food mm -hmm. that comes from Fukushima Prefecture. So um, I was probably, the, as I said, closest was about 60 miles, but those areas are at least 40, 60 miles away from that part of the coastline. And so, but there's still an issue with people's trust of food, though, right? There is. Um, apparently, the testing is done every day. And what they have found is that, in general, the radiation levels um, have come down in almost everything. The, the produce, the fruit, the yeah. rice, the beef. What they're seeing go up in seafood. And when you think about uh. it, it kind of makes sense because of the, the water that, was, that came out of it, the mm -hmm. reactor. And whatever. So where do they get their food from? Well, in general, from the area. So it, everyone is buying it again, and it's not quite as um, expensive as it once was on the world market when they export it. So they're not getting the same kind of prices they did before the accident. 